All right, so I had a question about someone who's asking um, uh, about, oh, the coronavirus thing is going on at the moment, and I feel detached. What's happening to me? What, uh, what's happening? Um, there's, there's a couple of things. I and mean, one of the things is, um, uh, they're both related. So when you do something like, uh, also, I mean, quite a few things can happen. When you're practicing the observer, or going to groups where, the, where in the field of the group, a lot of people are practicing the observer, uh, you tend to get it. You, you tend to get it through um, the group experience. So the, the uh, intuitive capacity for obse observing and detaching um, can be very strong. That is, that is great. <coughs> if you're not hooking into the, into the insanity that's going, ar going around about coronavirus, um, then that's brilliant. You don't want to be hooking in. It, get, it gets a lot worse when you start believing and hooking into yeah. everything that's yeah. being said. Yeah. So it's a state of grace. Now, another thing that can happen with spiritual seekers, and it's very often with people who've done a lot of spiritual work, is they can have periods of intense grace where yeah. nothing touches them. Um, now, sometimes if you practice the observer or go to groups where the observer is going on, you know, you, you, can, you, can, you can facilitate the observer happening very strongly for periods of time. It's almost like you get it from the, the group. Uh, when, when several people are in the observer in a group or have that strong feeling, it tends to impart itself on anyone who brings it. So you just get it from the group energy. That can happen, and if you're observing and not clinging on to all the belief systems and all the negativity in the world, that is, that is great. Take it as a, a state of grace that you're not hooking in to limited, limited uh, belief systems and fears that are going on. And you're, it's almost like, because the conscious contact with God or the spiritual experience is so intense, you're immunized from picking up data from the world. You know, the intensity of the inner radiance of, uh, of grace is so strong that it's like there's an immunity to picking up people saying things. When you're in those strong, one of my favorite things in the Course of Miracles, it talks about the hush of heaven, mm -hmm. you know, and I knew exactly when I read this, some of the things like resonate. You know when you're in those strong spiritual experiences, it's like the world can't touch you. It's like even, you know, I remember once walking outside of Oxford, uh, outside Bond Street tube station, and it was like it was silent. There was like a hush in the, you know, as the buses were going by. It's like the intensity of spiritual experience is so strong. It's like even noises and people speaking to you, it doesn't, it, it's like nothing sticks. Everything's like a footprint. People say things, people are doing things, people are shouting, people are talking their negativity, but the inner radiance of the light is so strong that you can't pick up data and retain data from the world. So that, that's a state of grace. It's almost like mm -hmm. divinity is protecting you from the madness and the data mm -hmm. and the lower levels of consciousness that are being played out in the world. So mm -hmm. take it as a state of grace and, and allow it. Sometimes people, because you can't see people's past lives, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes you, know, you can be whacked with a, with a level of good karma which can mm. suddenly come out of no, for no reason. Mm. It's like you're feeling really shit, everything's going wrong, and then suddenly you can be catapulted into, uh, you know, into a state of absolute bliss and sublime happiness and stillness and presence. And it can last for a period of time. And then you can be kicked, it almost feels like you're kicked out of it, back into a, a normal level of consciousness. And those are things because you, you're not, they're out of awareness. There's, you know, it, you know, like in, a, in the past lifetime, you might have been Mother Teresa, you know, helping everyone. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, but the lifetime before that, you were like a cowboy builder, you know, like taking everyone's money. Mm -hmm. So in this lifetime, it's like there's divine synchronicity. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have times when it seems like everything is going wrong and people are trying to take advantage of you. And then sometimes it seems almost like it's as if for no reason you have a, a period of time where everything is like nothing touches you. You're in a, in a field of bliss and presence and a witnessing. And it, people are screaming, people are saying the whole world's going to end and you're still feeling this uh, intense happiness. Everything is related to the level of consciousness. You know, like when you're strongly in ego, in your thinking and your fear, 
then that's like, the Course calls that perception. You know, there's a difference between ego perception and the level of consciousness you're at as to how one experiences the world. So when you're in fear, it's like you look through, I call them glasses, you know, your glasses are fear tinged and like, oh my God, you know, that person just coughed, this person looks a bit ill, uh, I, think I'm, I think I've got a heart palpitation. Uh, let me hand out masks to everyone so at least I can protect my family and friends. But it's like, uh, that's just an emanation of that level of consciousness. You're looking through those glasses and it's like everything, you're, there's fear and separation and problems everywhere. But when you're, as, you, as you let go and you do spiritual work, you, you, the perception starts to get more, less fearful. You start to feel more li limitless in nature and it's almost like the world seems to, to be imbued with positivity and hope. Mm -hmm. And even though people might be in fear, you say, it's going to be fine, don't worry about it, you know, it's okay. And you kind of have that, you know, you, ha you have that sense with you and then, then as you get into the deeper, more profound spiritual experiences, it's like, you know, there's this stillness, presence, or the Course calls it the hush of heaven. And you can't, you know, and you see positivity and love everywhere. And even, or if you see it through divine vision, you have compassion because people are, are lost in their thinking and in mm -hmm. fear. But it's seen through, through the clear vision of, of the spirit. So those are like, and this world is just full of people at different levels of consciousness, you see, and so their experience is very different. Also, just because, you know, but a lot of spiritual seekers, when they do intense work, will start to have these spiritual phases much more frequently. So it's like, in, uh, in the early, when I was in an active addiction, it was just fear and limitation and terror all the time. You start to do spiritual work, you get bursts of spiritual experience. And the more you do it, the longer they last and the more. If you start doing things like A Course in Miracles and the observer and feel the feelings and doing A Course in Miracles, all my thoughts are meaningless, I'm not a body, I'm free then these spiritual experiences start to get more intense and sustained. Mm -hmm. I think the great thing with the observer, which is very close to a very high spiritual experience, is it teaches you how not to hook into data. Don't pick up that thought. Now, what happens when people, some people are catapulted into spiritual experiences, but they're not yet, they haven't yet sort of done a lot of spiritual work. So they can go into very high spiritual experiences and not know why they're in those spiritual experiences. And then something happens like, uh, like uh, I know someone, you know, they got a letter through the door and then they get hooked out, you know, or, you know, your, your, your dog gets run over and then suddenly you start tracking and then you get pulled back into a low level of consciousness. But the more you do, the more you get more advanced, there's an capa innate capacity of consciousness not to pick up, basically. Do not pick up the next meaningful thought. Do not pick up that handbag. Do not pick up that donut or that cake. It's, it's not a mental thing. Because there's such a, such a, a divine inspirational inner willingness beyond the field of thinking to just stay within and in those fields of consciousness not to pick up the world. Mm. Pick up, you know, like, basically you could say the world is full of belief systems. Mm. You know, collective, the collective unconscious, the collective belief systems. It's like... This world is full of data, like pick this up, pick that up, pick this up, you know. So, you, but as you get deeper within, it's like a protective field. It's like God's grace looking after you. You don't have to pick up everything that's been thrown at you. So, um, that's the thing. So, if you're staying detached when the whole world is worried about dying of coronavirus, that's grace. You know, and people are saying, like, shaking you, saying, you should be worried, you know, like, <laughs> let me tell you the statistics of coronavirus, and you're still staying detached. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a good sign, you know, it's a good sign staying that. Don't start believing everything they're saying. Because there's a thing, you know, when people start screaming at you, they're, they're, it's, it's like an invitation to start tracking the world and yeah. picking up the negativity of the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So actually, as you become a mature spiritual student, you know, you know not to take the temptation, the bait. You know, if you're serene, you know, people in fear or people in dishonesty and non always want to grab you down. Mm -hmm. You know, like they're feeling fearful. I think I'm going to die. Everyone's got a mask on. I want you to be, you shouldn't be serene. I don't want you to be serene. Like, take this seriously. Like, have some fear. 
let me like, read the newspaper, see how bad this stuff is, you know. Mm -hmm. So the world almost like wants to suck you in when you're in yeah. these sublime states. But if you go to spiritual groups, they'll say like, don't pick up the bait, you know, because you're doing a, you're doing a lot of clearing for the world by holding that oasis of peace and stillness when the whole world is going into chaos. You're clearing, like, you know, if you look into Dr. Hawkins' research on what one enlightened teacher doing by that light emitting into the world of darkness, yeah. it's phenomenal. Like, uh, I think, like, a, one enlightened teacher is counterbalancing the negative of something like 70 million people in negativity. Like Dr. Hugh Len, just to clear the data, you know, all this crap, data, belief systems, clear the data and a whole prison for the people gets well. So that's the grace you do. It's not like the world doesn't come up and give you a badge or give you a salary for it, but you're, you're doing valuable spiritual work and God will take care of you. So staying detached is, is, is grace, you know, and you just keep, uh, keep, keep it safe.